psycho street gangs, a money train dealing in mysterious cubes, and a John Wick style horse chase in the middle of the Bronx. We've got it all in our view of Here Comes Calico number seven from Sigma Comics. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is Gabe Hernandez, your publisher in EIC. And today we have a review of Here Comes Calico number seven from Sigma Comics. And in this issue, uh, Calico goes undercover as a cube distributor through the roughest gang territories in the Bronx on a special money train catering to criminals. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Make sure to hit that bell for notification. Make sure to stay tuned to the end for the rating and the score. So let's get into the credits. Here comes Calico number seven. It is written by H.H. H. German. Art by Renato Pinto. Colors by Daniel Grimaldi. Letters also by Renato Pinto and cover art by Garnabio. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Not quite sure, but we'll, we'll go with it. Okay, so what happened last time? Calico managed to track down a gentleman by the name of Pressman who works indirectly through Kingman. And he found out that Pressman was, the, was tagged to be the distributor of these strange glowy cubes in a bag to all the different gang, criminal gangs of New York City, primarily through the Bronx. And to get one of the cubes, you have to have a black card. A black card costs ridiculous amounts of money. So only the wealthiest of the wealthy of the gangs pooling all their resources from drugs to racketeering to everything in between can afford a black card and get these cubes. Don't know what the cubes do, but they are incredibly important, incredibly valuable to Kingman. And so uh, Calico is determined to find out what it's all about. Somewhere in the middle of all of that, he lost his floating sphere AI called Bumble, who helps Calico with his investigations, monitoring the scenes, uh, communicating back with Dog Mama, and helping him out. So that sphere was accidentally lost in a tussle in the last issue, and it was stolen, or I should say recovered by Sticker, a, an assassin who works for Kimmy. And so Calico now is determined to find out what the cubes are all about and get the sphere back, uh, which is codenamed Bubble. So that's where we left off. Let's talk about what happens in this issue. In this issue, Calico goes undercover as the cube distributor, hops on the money train. He's still in his Calico costume, but he keep, basically keeps a hoodie over his head to diminish any uh, notice uh, from the, any of the gangs or any of the criminals who might have seen him in the past. As each gang comes on the train, they give him a black card, he gives him a glowy cube, and then the train slowly works its way down to, from the northern end of New York City, primarily in the Bronx, down, or the borough Bronx, down to the southern part of, of the Bronx. The further south you go, the more dangerous it gets, the crazier the gangs get. And eventually the gangs start fighting each other as they get in and off, on and off the train. You get everything from bats to the face, to knives in the back, shooting, stabbing, strangling, kicking, and then the costumes just get weirder and weirder when you got criminal gangs that look like uh, pirates <laughs> to criminal gangs that look like um, sports players. I mean, truly, the, the tagline really does make sense. It's, this, is, this is the superhero version of, a, of the Warriors. Uh, so if you're familiar with that film, please go check it out. It's fantastic. It's amazing. So... What it, what's an interesting fact about this particular, not just this issue, but the series as a whole, Sigma Comics is a, is a staunch believer in animal rights activism and making sure that animals who are neglected or abused get proper treatment. Calico, the main character of this comic, is his whole mission, just besides the glowy cubes, is he absolutely t takes focus in on, in on uh taking bad guys who abuse animals and doing horrific things to them for punishment and for justice. I mean, he doesn't just like smack a guy around. He will cut off limbs. <laughs> he will, he will, he will shove things in places where nothing should be shoved. And Calico has no qualms about, uh, absolutely devastating, uh, committing absolutely devastating violence against, against animal abusers. And so by extension, this comic series takes part of the proceeds and do donates them to an assortment of animal rights 
shelters and charities that, that take care of animals who are abused and neglected. That's, if nothing else, that's a worthy cause. So even if you, the story isn't your cup of tea, if you are serious about taking care of animals who are neglected or abused, uh, you may want to consider picking this up knowing that your money is going to a worthy cause. So what do we like about uh, Here Comes Conical number seven? If you like The Warriors, and we do, we're, we're a fan of The Warriors. That's a, a fantastic film. I believe, uh, let's see. Let me check real quick and see what year did that come out. 1979. 1979, directed by Walter Hill, of course. Yes. Uh, if you haven't seen that film, please do see that film. So you ha definitely have a distinctive The Warriors vibe as the train goes from one stop to the next and the, the gangs get on to give over their black card and pick up the cubes and they become more violent, more surreal, more eclectic, more theme-based. And it's, it's it's an interesting ride just to watch it go all the way through almost to the end of the issue. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the action is extremely violent, brutal, gritty grindhouse. So if you like that kind of grimy, bash your face in kind of violence that you would get from a movie like The Warriors, uh, you're in good shape. This is the kind of comic book for you. What we, didn't we like about the comic is the stakes are still unclear. This is issue seven of eight. Eight is coming up soon. It's a double-sized issue that, to wrap it all up. But at this point, we still have no idea what's going on from, from a stakes perspective. What are the cubes? Why do they want them? What do they do? What's going on? <laughs> Calico is just sort of chasing leads, knowing that eventually he wants to get the Kingmen, but what Kingman is doing and why and what the cubes are for and what that has to do with, with street gangs and Bronx, no clue, none whatsoever. And we're, th this is the penultimate issue. Now it's good from an action and, and grindhouse violence perspective, but if you're trying to follow along with the story to figure out where, where we are in the plot, couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you. And I think that's probably the main concern of this particular series is the plot is, is disjointed. The bits are interesting when, um, H. H. Kerman, the writer, is is a is a championship fighter. So he works opportunities to do champion to have Calico go in and do some championship fighting styles and moves and get into little engagements where you can see him acting out the moves. And that's good and that's great. And those moments are kind of interesting and fascinating from a certain perspective. But when you try to tie that back, okay, so what does this have to do with the story? The pieces don't quite merge together in a cohesive, clean, clear way. It's just a jumble of pieces flowing together rather than a smooth, clear stream. And that's what will probably need to be worked out if, if we continue this series after the eight issues are up and if it goes into a, a sequel or, or some other direction. That's what Grumman should work on is making sure that the pieces fit together in a cohesive narrative. And they don't right now, at least not with this. Okay, quick word about the art. What do you think about the art? The art is fantastic. This is this is big two level style quality art. Powerful lines, lots of detail. The inks and the pencils are fantastic. Every character has a distinctive look. The figure work is consistent and powerful and engaging. The panel co uh, composition is dramatic and excellent. And the coloring is, is amazing on this book. Very surprising level of quality for a indie offering. So we hope to see, uh, if nothing else, if the story doesn't quite float, float your boat, the art is excellent. I mean, definitely grade A art, which is what you want to see out of the comic book. So final thoughts. What do we think about Here Comes Calico number seven from Sigma Comics? Uh, great, gritty, bloody, violent groundhouse action. Very reminiscent of The Warriors from 1979, directed by Walter Hill. It's a classic. Please go check that out. Uh, the And the art looks amazing. This is this is top tier level art. So if you if you like good visuals and lots of you know, eye popping action, things that engage your eyeballs, you're in great shape. However, if you're trying to follow the story along, <laughs> issue number seven uh, going into the finale, which is going to be issue number eight, penultimate issue, we still kind of have no idea what's going on. We know Calico wants to get Kingman, but the gangs and the cubes and money trains and all these things that are happening, they don't fit together as well as they could or should. And so the plot is where this series suffers most. So therefore we're going to give, here comes Calico number seven, a solid 6.5 out of 10. That seems like a low score, but it's a fair score and there's always room to do better. So you're going to have some up and downs, but that's a good score. So 
Speaking of momentum and, and good art and thinking about where series go next, check out this week's op-ed on our culmination of all the information that came out of this past weekend's Comics Pro 2024. Uh, and it could change everything that you think about comics as far as where the publishers are going next. And, and some of the information could have a profound impact on indie publishers going forward. So thank you very much and you have a great day.